So I raised cattle, commercial cattle, for 30 years, and I switched. I got my first um, Brahmin bull, registered Brahmin bull, six years ago, and it was Spartacus's dad. And that first Brahmin was so awesome, and I just fell in love with him. And um, I, I don't regret switching over my commercial herd, my calves now. What I do with the registered Brahmins, it's called seed stock. My calves are seeding other people's breeding programs. But it is ultimately because of um, steaks and hamburgers that we all have a business. I mean, that's the ultimate, that's why we raise them, okay? Now, Spartacus will never be somebody's hamburger or steak. No one will ever eat this. I love this bull and he'll die on my farm. Oh, he's giving you kisses for it. He's burped in my face. <laughs> <laughs> Spartacus was born here at Browse Farm and he was born to one of my favorite cows that I call Molly and she's just a really really friendly cow with a great disposition and this is Spartacus's full sister this is the mom this is I breed for this temperament and Spartacus was born on May 2nd 2016 and I got to witness his birth and be right there. The mama cow, uh, Brahma mamas can be kind of um, protective, but this cow loves me and I, you know, we have a good relationship. And he came out all speckled and he was just so adorable with his big long ears and everything. Um, but from the time he was just a few days old, he was very social. I don't know that I didn't imprint on him being there when he was born and, and being able to love on him. And, you know, I probably helped dry him off a little bit. He was born in the evening, so um, I left uh, Molly and her calf together for the evening. And then the next day I was out there and she was just show, so proud to show me her calf and, and you know, um, let me love on him and everything else. As he was a calf, every time I would go check on the cows, Spartacus would come up to me just for attention, you know, to get his neck scratched and things like that. His mom and the rest of the herd could walk off and Spartacus would just stay with me. I mean, they're herd animals. Usually when the herd walks away, a calf will be like, oh, there they go, I gotta go with them. And he would just stay there as long as we would scratch, you know, on him and love on him. So he was just social and just had that personality from day one. And so um, I just knew that I had to keep him. Pat him. Here, give him a treat. Show me how. Gotta go like this though. Watch out, it's like feeding the hungry hippo. The way their tongue is, oh. it's, it, it's hard for them to get it out of that way. I'm nervous. Okay. Well, when he opens up, just put it in there. And oh, he's got bottom easy. teeth. Yeah, but you just... You that was easy. That was easy. Oh, that one's really small. It makes me nervous. Just give him a I give him a taller, a longer... Oh, I dropped it. You want to be a cowboy? You want to be a cowboy and sit right here? Look how nice he's being. Good boy. Good Gosh, your mom could probably this. sit up there and he wouldn't do anything. Yeah, you want to try? Hold on to the hump. Okay. Your mom can't hold you. See, you're a cowboy. Look at that smile. You're a cowboy. Oh, cowboy riding a Brahmin bull. Look at you. Oh, look at that. Awesome. I am not exactly sure. I had had some horses and trail road, you know, nothing um, fancy, no showing, just um, really enjoyed trail riding. 
horses and um, Spartacus just had such a nice personality and, and maybe I saw somebody on social media that, you know, rode a cow or something and I was like, well, I wonder if we could do this. And then I look at, back at some pictures I had and when he was about a year old, you know, um, I had put um, a bareback saddle on him to see, you know, if that would, if he'd be flustered about it. Nope. Um, and then when he got bigger, about two years old, two and a half, um, I put my Western saddle on him and, you know, put um, some weight on it. And I was like, wonder if this would phase him. And so I did all the groundwork training you do, but I'm by no means a trainer. But I was like, this would just be something to put on a bucket list, you know, to be able to ride a Brahmin bull <laughs> and stuff. So um, I don't know, I like, guess I like doing different things, but um, he is just so sweet. And um, I thought, well, w wonder if I could ride him. My name is Terry Lindley. It's Terry Bowen Lindley on Facebook. And I train horses, camels, zebras, exotic cattle, llamas, alpacas, and I've got to mess with a couple of giraffes. And I'm exclusively mobile. I work nationwide. I have a passport, which I hope to get to at least to Australia after the borders open again. And I'm somewhere North Carolina, I believe. <laughs> and um, we're working with Spartacus, five-year-old breeder bull that Sienna has done absolutely incredible work preparing his game. I've saved up for a year and a little plus to be able to get her. I've been following her on Facebook. I like how she calls people out, but I like her honesty and I love the integrity she has. And it's all about caring about the animals. And you can tell the number of animals that she has fixed. You know, that the owners, not intentionally, but maybe have messed up. You want me to do it for you? Okay. See all these knots? Yeah. The knots are so that I don't let them get away from me, but yes. Yeah. I'll use ones without a knot. The animals, if we're not smarter than them, the animals train us. So there's just this very few individuals that are smart enough to actually understand the way the animals are talking their language and, and to work with that and to mesh with that and to focus and zoom in and be one with the animals. So I'm sure she's been called everything from camel ninjas to whatever. <laughs> but um, so I hired her for three days out here at Browse Farm Brahmins. And honestly, after the first day, I was like, if you left today, I got my money's worth. <laughs> okay, no release. I mean, no, no release. <laughs> What this shows me is on the lot where I tied them, I could groom her from head to tail, but this friend, she knows you. Yeah. But this is good. This is so much what she needs. She's going to go to a strange place and yeah. do strange folk. But she should stop this shit pretty soon. But she, in the meantime, she's learning to turn right, learning to turn left. Oh, good. Because <laughs> if you don't have a caramel, a, cow, a cattle bovine that'll bend through the neck, you can dang sure get in trouble with them. There it is. How easy that is? Look 
at that. She wants to go home with me now. Terry has an incredible knack for training the owners that are trainable. I'm sure she does much better with the animals. The animals are the easy she, part. Yeah, right. But she cares about imparting, if people will listen and learn, the knowledge that she has. And, and it takes a little bit of putting your ego aside when she calls you out and says, you're doing that wrong and quit doing that. You're giving it that message. You're not being consistent. No, 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 no. And I just want to go, wait, what? Huh? Uh, and then I go, yeah, she's right. See, you just did it again. You're right. See, every single time you put a pressure and you don't require the change, you're doing what? Teaching him that he could get away with not doing you No, know, you're desensitizing him and you're confusing him. It's not about him getting away with anything. Okay. Um, they learn from the release of pressure. So when you release at the wrong time for the wrong thing, they learn the wrong thing. Okay. If we're inconsistent with the release, then really they're confused. confused. They're just confused. So consistency is where they really find trust. <laughs> it's not all pets and scratches and treats. <laughs> it's not. You have to have respect and you have to know what you're doing. And honestly, that Brahmin bull, he could take us both out if he wasn't started right. He's not a pet. Yes, I love him. Oh my gosh. You know, he'll have the biggest shrine when he ever passes away. And I'll cry thinking about that. But he is not just a pet. He, he's, is he my dream come true? Is he my love of my life? Yes. But I couldn't have him and enjoy him if there wasn't this just huge amount of respect. Because he's a bull. You know, and he's a Brahmin bull. You tell him, buddy. Come on. Come on. Hey, Spartacus. Oh, you tell him. shush. I'm well, ignoring you. Come on. Stop you it. You tell him. Come on. Spartacus. How'd you like to have that snorting thing come after you? You wouldn't. That'd be fine, wouldn't it? You tell him, Spartacus. Now that once they see each other, he's fine. <laughs> but it's so funny, they live together. <laughs> but it's a bull thing. Wow. Knowing that he is a breeding bull and, and several people, that Terry Lindley was one of them, was like, um, you know, he'll be a lot calmer as a steer, um, pro most likely. You know, um, testosterone, um, you know, make, makes a bull think of several things, and, and fighting is one of them, and the other one is breeding. Um, <laughs> and, and fighting for the right to breed, and, and wondering if him being an intact bull would... Um, affect his personality with riding and public events. So I considered having him castrated to calm him down. But after speaking to a vet at NC State that I sent videos to and I had contacted him about having him collected and then castrated. And he contacted me and he was like, well, we can still do this. He said, but he's five years old and this is his personality and he is so docile. And he basically said, that's not gonna change his personality any. I don't know why you would do this. And I was like, oh, okay. So I just thought it was the responsible thing to do, to have a bull, if I'm gonna have him in public, you know, have him be a steer um, so that nobody could say, you know, what are you doing bringing that bull in public? But Spartacus truly is really docile as a bull. And um, when he's out in a herd and there are cows in standing heat, I have had him come up to me to have his neck rubbed and then him jump a cow right next to me and then jump off and come right back to be scratched. Now that's a little bit scary because he's so big and, you know, and I just don't want to get knocked around but there's nothing that is aggressive in his personality. So of course you have to be smart and have control of the animal. But um, when the vet said it wasn't gonna make him any more docile to have him castrated, I was like, well, why do that then? He can keep breeding cows for me. <laughs> Thank you.
she gave me assignments, you know. She was like, well, we're going to make sure he steers and he can stop and he can go. So here's ground driving. And I had never ground driven anything. I, didn't, I mean, I knew that it had something to do with teaching an animal to steer and, and do, and, and especially if they're going to eventually work or pull a cart or things. But, well, you sent me about a minute, minute and a half worth Video. of videos. And I was like... Which one was it? Was it Igor? No, Owen? it was the Longhorn, the young Longhorn. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And Titan. Stuff. Yeah, and you're going through a yard and around a tree and some stuff like that. And I was like, okay, I can try that. So... <laughs> And they had a saddle on that bull in the little video, and the, the ground lines were through the stirrups, and we discussed head stalls a little bit. Anyway, so I come out here, and the first time, I'm like, okay, Spartacus, we're going to try this. And the funniest thing is I pull up the video because I want to watch it one more time that she sent me. And I'm like, here, Spartacus, will you watch this? It was watch just and learn. I, but I'm like, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and I felt like I didn't have enough hands, and I was all in his face, you know. But, but he did great. And then the next time I got better, and the next time, and I mean, he knew what we were doing. To, it was because of your videos, okay? Spartacus, back. Good boy. Good boy. Let's turn this one walk. 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 With me. Walk. Let's leave the boy. behind. Walk. With me. There's something else. We need to find Say you'll go Don't make me wait And whoa. There's no need Good. to hesitate Let's make footprints in sand Let's make miracles Come hold my hand Let's find To have animals is such an honor, but to have animals that are smarter than you, day in and day out, it's a lot That's... of having to go. If he doesn't understand something, it's because I'm not communicating. Effectively, I'm not effectively. Yeah. yeah, he's not being a bet head on purpose. There's a few times he's like, "Well, I really don't want to do that," but then he does. I mean, he does. But most of the time, he is just confused because I'm not being consistent, and he doesn't. You know, I'm not speaking his correct language. He's trying to interpret it, but he's like, that just sounds like goobly goop to me. So <laughs> it's just confusing. I'll just, I'll just stop. better. <laughs> well, when I'm initially watching somebody work their animal, I'm just wanting to see if the animal is responding appropriately, if the handler is asking appropriately, if there's some softness, some feel, some clear communication. Whoa. No! Whoa. I thought he had to come. There! Let him walk back into the release. Just like if you're asking them to come forward and you're in front of them, let them come forward to create the release. It's exactly the same thing, but now we want we want him to back into that field to create the release. Does that make sense? Does it does that make sense? It makes sense, but putting it all together is Yeah, but just because he stops his feet 
Well, I drop it. He dropped his head, and I thought I that don't he would. Give if he drops his head, we don't need collection on him. You know, with animals that are this large and this strong, as the camels and the cattle especially, is and they're so smart. You know, they outsmart you quickly. You know, and or train you quickly, and can become quite dangerous. And I've dang near died a few times doing what I do. I mean. It's, so the way we communicate, not by showing up, by, by God, I'll show you who's boss, you know. It's mentoring, it's I'm a big sister, I want to help direct and teach you, we're going to dance, but I'm going to lead, you know, let's do this together kind of a thing. So we practice, you know, the animals are the easy part. Learning how to communicate and say the same thing a million times, a million different ways, till something clicks and how they re, re read or define my words, my wording, my vocabulary, so they can understand what I mean by when I say check, check, you know. And the whip, I'm scared now. Did you feel that small change first? Now pay real close attention to your forearms where the rope is hanging. Uh -huh. Okay, right. Can you just know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. I'll feel what? Feel that? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, the forearms yeah. are pretty cute. Pretty cute. Yeah. What? Yeah, now try to act a little bit more like him. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, because that's true. Really... There, that's the feel you're looking for. So, what? Well, go see my buddy up here. Ooh. That's what you're looking for. So, so let's trade places. Okay. You're on my face. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> You're telling me to go, but have the foot on the brake. Oh. That's how you want it to feel. Right. So go ahead and turn me around. Walk. There you go. Walk. Good girl. <laughs> oh. Try not to absorb it as you get yeah. into it. Be more of a post. Go ahead and ask me to go forward again. I want to feel a little bit of a creak. Walk. <laughs> and he can feel, feel like that. that. Yeah, okay. Now I got to go. With consistency and follow through. A 2,000 pound feather on a string. Oh my God. <laughs> when I got here initially the first morning, I said, let me see what you do. Let me see you interact with him. Let me see what's going on with both of you. A lot of times when I do that, but I don't see him do it, he'll bow and just lean into it. <laughs> And within an hour, I usually, 90% of the time, I put the owner on the animal first with me handling them in hand. Because I don't want to be up there with the novice handler handling the animal. And because they make me nervous if something goes wrong. Um, but after watching her and me messing with him a little bit, I said, Climb on, and she said, "Huh?" <laughs> I was she too says, "What? Well, will you get on him first? And I'm like, "Sure, take a hold of him. Let's go." I mean, that's how much I trusted him. 
and how much I trusted her work from what I saw. He grabbed the hump instead of the mane. And I scratch his butt behind him too, but he likes all of that. Oh yeah. Oh, he's like, yep. You used to camels. He's an absolute gem. She's done an incredible. That's very, not very often. I'll climb on a 2,000 pound breeder bull for the very first ride and feel comfortable and be able to even video and ride with one hand the very first ride out. You know, he's just that safe feeling. You know, he's a good boy, and he could kill you. You know, he does everything because he's kind. I've been kind to him, but firm. Right. He, yeah, he's a true gentleman. But. This is my every dream coming true for him. You know, because he was born on my farm. I've been working with him in a way, not all the time, but, you know, for five years. And thought, he's so cool. He'd be good at this. But what do I know? Because I really know nothing. <laughs> I had a couple trail horses, but I would never have called myself a good rider even. So, as a matter of fact, I would have called myself a very fearful rider. So, to have this dream to me is sort of a big deal that yeah. it's what I want it's that you only live once you do it right that's enough I'll ride him back up in the barn now for you to get on him. first time I got on him, I remember telling myself, breathe, breathe. I wasn't scared. I was so excited to have this dream come to fruition and, and to actually be on his back riding him. I mean, it was um, just, I was so excited. And um, so I guess it was sort of a nervous energy, but it wasn't that I was fearful in the least. I was just like, Oh my God, I'm doing this, you know. So um, since then, I get excited every time I get um, ready to mount Spartacus, and it's just such an amazing, exhilarating feeling to ride him. Um, but um, I just, I cannot thank Terry enough. Um, she's, she's an incredible trainer. Um, she's had so many just great pointers with, um, you know, the Brahmins and animals and animal sense and, um, Wow, she's just, uh, she's an amazing gift, truly, sharing um, a lot, so much of her knowledge. She didn't really come out, well, she did to train Spartacus, but she trains the people that own 
the animals, you know, because she knows she's going to fly back home in three days and that the rest is up to the, you know, me. And so that was really nice. Eighteen fifty, solid, yep. Okay, sold for eighteen fifty. While Terry was here, she just really believes in um, taking these animals out of their environment to a different environment with a lot of stimulus and, and uh, sort of for desensitization and just so that they can have all those different experiences. If you wanna take an animal and put them in a parade or an event where there's cars and streets and different things, you know, you, you need to take them there and see how they're gonna do. So we hauled Spartacus to Denton because it's just a, a small country town about 10 miles from here and um, just walked all through town. We want to walk them back to the farmer's market or? Yeah. Did you? I think we ought to go across the street at least. Okay. Walk around the car. anything over I have to buy it if you do good boy he was just an ace you know walking through the streets and the park and all the strangers and different people that came up um, it was it was just uh, a, an awful lot of fun to do the only um, thing that Spartacus really reacted to at one point is we were on a sidewalk past um, a beauty shop in another building and these buildings were glass fronted and um, he saw his own reflection in the glass and it sort of startled him. You could see him kind of bow up thinking, is that another cow? Is that, you know, for just a moment. But um, Terry was great when she saw him do that. She's like, keep him moving, keep him going. You know, don't give him time to stop and look and react. You know, he's got to pay attention to you. So um, there was a lot of benefit of taking Spartacus to um, away from his own farm and his own safety just to get him used to what it's going to be like being famous.
watching Terry on social media, she very often will take camels and different animals that she is halter training to attract her supply because there's another, you know, strange place, especially if you want to take an animal into different, you know, nursing homes or just different locations. It's an interesting place to take an animal to get them desensitized and, and see all the sights and sounds. And I'm like, you say that um, you welcome all pets. I said, what if the pet is, you know, a 1900 pound Brahmin bull? And they're like, well, do you have control of them? And I'm like, yeah, I think so. You know, and they're like, okay, bring them by sometime. We went on a Saturday morning, a friend and I, and um, walked him through the tractor supply. So we walked through and we met the manager and he was so impressed and everybody that was there shopping when they saw him walking through were like, oh, you know, it was just so much fun to do that. The manager was like, well, how about an event where you bring them and people can come see them? And I was like, that'd be great. And um, the way that tractor supply is set up, their back room um, where they have fencing supplies and, and feed is a huge area. And I was like, this would be a great place. We'll set up a little pin and we'll have a table. just a huge event. There was a line non-stop. People sat there in line, a lot of them for 45 minutes with their kids. Um, everybody had smiles on and they waited in line that long just to have two or three minutes in the pen with Spartacus. The little kids were sitting on them and people were taking pictures. And um, the greatest thing about that event though is we didn't charge anybody anything. I have had people contact me and were like, um, well, how much do you charge people? I'm thinking of doing that with my animal. And I'm like, we didn't charge anybody because it just didn't feel right to let some kid who would just want to come up and pet them and, and see them not be able to do it because, you know, we were charging $20 a person or something, or I don't know what people would charge for that. But um, so at 2 p.m., the line was still, um, all the way out the room and into the main part of the store. So we couldn't leave those people uh, in line and just say, well, our time's up, we gotta go. So um, we, were, we were there um, at least an hour and a half longer than we had planned on it. But um, it was just a great event and there were so many smiles and, and everybody just um, really enjoyed that. So that was Spartacus's um, first huge event like that and everybody that came signed up and they're now part of a Spartacus fan club where we contact them and let them know where Spartacus will be next. He pooped it down there. I need a broom, please. He pooped down there at the front of the store. He's got a bucket, but we need a broom. Okay. Let's bring the dust down. I appreciate it. No problem. Have you got any white or anything that I can get? We're going to take him out in the pasture. I would like Spartacus to just be an ambassador for the Brahmin breed, showing people how amazing Brahmin cattle can be and their personalities. I will, um, I'd like to take to Spartacus to, you know, public events where he can meet people and people can, you know, get to learn about Brahmin cattle, but I will probably never monetize Spartacus where, you know, I'm charging people to have their picture made with him or charging people to sit on him or, you know, sit on him and have me lead him around or things like that. <laughs> Love you, baby. Oh, gosh, I'll just extra skin. Spartacus's main goal is to be my therapist. 
that when I'm having a hard day, I can go out and he can set his big old head on my shoulder and I can tell him all my problems and he just seems to understand. And um, I just, there's no price I can put on the bond and the friendship I have with him and how cool it is to um, have him in my pasture and, and know that I can throw a saddle on him and um, ride him around, so. It is absolutely a dream come true to be able to ride Spartacus. Um, when he was just a little calf wondering if I could do it, um, to now being able to put a saddle on him and get on and, and ride him around the pastures. And um, in a sense, when um, life has challenges and I wonder, well, could I do this? Could I do that? I'm like, well, heck. You're a 50-year-old lady and you can ride a Brahmin bull. You can do anything. Oh.